my family didn't agree with me. They thought I was crazy. There's a quote from Jim Collins. It's about, you know, get the right people on the bus and get the wrong people off the bus. And, and as he says, that includes family and friends. It's like an athlete, right? And you're on a team sport. You're not playing well, you get cut. This week on High Performance, how to build your own brand with Jason Daniel. You've got to stay consistent. And it's that one of our values is 1% better every day. It's like, you're not going to have good days. There's always going to be those days, but they're the days you get up and you just keep going because they're the days that matter the most. You used to go to these events and it'd be like, have three businesses and do all this and they're the people that have made it but if you're focusing on trying to build yourself up to create something don't try and put yourself in too many places you know you don't see a professional athlete trying to be three different sports they're the best at one sport what about people who are listening going well i don't know anything about fashion but i want to work in the fashion business i know nothing about media but i want to set up a media business mm. how much did you know about this world nothing I was a carpenter that built houses <laughs> and raced motocross. There was really no certainty around the brand. Orders were getting cut back, and I was like, okay, am I gonna have it? Is this gonna be, is this gonna, is this gonna work or is it gonna fail? Don't worry about it, be myself and, and enjoy the journey. You know, if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Do you know, I think for anyone, you just, you gotta put yourself out there, but it's also one of those things you've, you know, you're gonna make mistakes, it's okay. Like fail forward, dare to think differently, nothing's <coughs> impossible. Move fast, break is essentially a value term to, you know, get done. Be somewhere and create a community, have a conversation. It could be one conversation could change someone's life about our mission and values. Hey everyone, it's Jake here with just a big thank you uh, to all of our new subscribers here on YouTube, giving you the truth behind the headlines so you can really get to know people. Hit subscribe please right now because the more subscribers, the bigger the channel, the bigger the channel, the bigger the names. Jason, welcome to High Performance. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Good. What is your definition of high performance? Well, it's it's a great question, actually. I've I've been thinking about this a lot because I'm a big fan of uh, of your guys' podcast, and um, my story it, it goes back like 20 years, to be honest. And um, you know, the brand started out in 2002 when I was in high school as a high school nickname, uh, Loose Kid. So I got termed loose kid growing up riding BMX and uh, they kind of thought I was a little bit loose on a bike. I used to ride with a bunch of guys who are a lot older than me, they're about 18 and you know, they end up becoming pro athletes as well, which kind of probably played a big part of my journey um, growing up. But when it got founded in 2002, it, it was just, you know, it was just a word we used and uh, I was at school, finished school, became a carpenter um, and raced motocross and had a huge passion to become a professional motocross athlete. And then in 2007, was when I actually decided, okay, I want this to be my career. And, uh, and then we changed the brand to LKI. And from 2007 to 2010, I was still working as a full-time carpenter. So, you know, before work, after work, in my lunch break, I was getting up, working on the brand. And when I mean working on the brand, I had no idea what I was doing. So I had to figure out even where to get a t-shirt from and find a supplier and then sell. We were predominantly a wholesale business because there was no social media back then. Um, and... So from there and, and was working from my mum's bedroom and we had containers there and, you know, in 2010 we moved out of there and pretty much started another apprenticeship and went full time on LKI. And then in 2010 to around 2017, um, you know, we were just grinding it out. I mean, I st still today, but was just, was honestly just, we made everything for everyone and I was just pushing every day. And when I look at, you know, back at that, uh, you know, and, and then really went through this period of we stopped growing, we were predominantly wholesale, uh, I was doing too many products. And when I mean that, it was making life jackets, motocross gloves, socks, some sportswear, some streetwear. And I was in so many different categories, spreading myself so thin. I was making, you know, so many mistakes and which I still do today, but, you know, which it makes you better every single day. But, you know, we had about a team of 12 back then and, 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 and it was really like, what am I doing? So when I, you know, this, and I'll share a little bit after that, but when I look at what high performance means to me, do you know, the brand has really only started to really grow in the last four years once I figured out what our mission and values were and what our why was. And, and we really created that as a team together at the office. When I think about what high performance means, it's, it's the consistency and constantly being consistent because this brand didn't grow overnight. It's been a journey for 15 plus years really going at it, but it's really only been the last four years. And, you know, I could have given up so many times and I think back as like, why did I have that drive? So I think high performance is one of those things that it's like, you've got to stay consistent. And it's that one of our values is 1% better every day. It's like, you're not going to have good days. There's always going to be those shitty days, but they're the days you get up and you just keep going because they're the days that matter the most. So when I, when I look back on my journey and I'm very thankful for it, I think, well, high performance isn't, you're not always going to be at your best, but it's those days when you do feel like shit and you get up and you just keep going and you keep learning and you keep developing yourself. 
to get better and essentially that one percent better is when it really matters so i think that that you know i know it, that's probably what i th- believe is high performance to us and and myself so yeah <laughs> oh there's so much to pick out there isn't there I mean, what an incredible story to start with um loads of entrepreneurs loads of self-starters loads of business people listen to this podcast so before we go a bit deeper into the things that you spoke about there i want you to share the one thing you would love them to hear from you at the very start of this podcast Oh, wow. Ah, well, I mean, I suppose one thing I'm very passionate about is our mission and values. And I think, you know, when we were in the journey of the early days, which it wasn't that long ago, do you know, it, it was, you know, it was, you know, if, around 2017, I was really trying to find my why. And I started listening to books and, you know, I, I, I was mentioning before, I went to a course called Landmark Forum in 2015. And then from there, I ended up joining a Toastmasters club because I struggled to public speak. I couldn't even talk in front of five people. Uh, and I did that for a couple of years to really learn and gain confidence in how to speak and impromptu speaking. And, and, and as that kind of went on, I started listening to books. Um, you know, we were talking about it before, do you know, the founder of Lululemon, you know, Nike founder and all the books on from there and, and really started to realize like, what, why do I go to work every day? You know, and, and LKI, um, kind of stopped growing. And in 2018, September, 2018 is when we changed to LSKD. So September, 2018, we transitioned the brand to LSKD and part of all these books we were listening to, I used to think I had to make every single decision within the brand. And it, it got to the point where I was like, well, hang on a minute. Why don't I ask our team? So at the time when we, we had LKI and we had LSKD and they were both on products. So I'll try to not make it sound too confusing, but we had LKI and LSKD on, on a t-shirt together, say. And when we had it on the product, I was like, oh my God, this is getting confusing to our community again. Yeah. Okay. And coming from action sports and, and being really heavily involved in motocross, um, I was like, okay, they're going to they're really get confused. So I was like, okay, well, instead of me making the decision what to do, I'll ask our team, but about 12 of us at the time, I'll ask our community and I'll ask our athletes, which, which one do you like? LKI or LSKD? And everyone kept saying LSKD. I'm like, you know what? This isn't my decision. We're doing this as a team and I believe in what they say. We're going to change to LSKD. And then we had a phrase called chase the vibe. And I thought, well, what, what, you know, what is our mission? Like, why do we go to work every, why do I go to work every day? Like, why do I get up and, and, and get at it every day? And, and what gets me up every day? And I thought, well, you know, listening to all these different books and trying to figure that out. And, and we tried to create a mission statement and values four or five years before that. I had no clue what it even meant. So it took me a long time to understand. And I was like, well, if it's to inspire people to chase the vibe through sport, fitness and adventure, and then we create sportswear with a street aesthetic. And if we can be best in the world at sportswear and essentially create the best leggings in the world for our female community with our own raw materials and fabrics, is that something that could be quite special that I'd want to go to work to, to every day and our team would want to come to work every day instead of just let's go and create a big brand, you know? I think that is cool and we want to create something special, but why do we want to go to work every day? And when we did it, it was really special to watch because our team were a part of that shift. It wasn't just me. And then as that came along, you know, and as that started to happen, you started to see it shifting because our team really started to be empowered. Um, and, you know, now we've got, you know, a team of 80 full-time team members, uh, you know, over 100 with the casual team, you know, and to see, you know, that coming to life of the work we put in back then before it really grew was really special. So I think, I mean, that's a small part of it, but that's something I would want the you know the listeners to 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 you know to hear today as to how that was created and one part of the story there's quite an interesting point you make there jason around the fact that you'd already been running the business for a long time before you started to think about your why that sense of purpose and the values and i'm interested if you could explain to us that a lot of people think you have to have that answer in place before you start the business and you've done it the other way around yeah what was it that prompted you to do that reflection and what has it given you since you've done it because you've got a very de- definite before and after to compare it to yeah and i think i think as a i suppose you would say as an entrepreneur founder you you start something to just because you know the reason the brand started wasn't because i was interested in i'm not a designer i'm not very good at that as in i, I you know i've just a passion for creating community you know i was an aspiring pro- professional athlete um, you know, was trying to make it as a pro athlete, didn't, but, you know, in motocross. And I think you, when you start something, you just start because you, you kind of love to do it, but you don't really know why. And I was in my early 20s. And I think back at 
you know, when I look at it all, and you know, what I was mentioning before, my, you know, when my wife fell pregnant um, in 2017, it really kind of woke me up as well. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm in the real world now. I really need to make sure that I'm providing for my family. And I, I don't, you know, it's an interesting one. I think you know, from from the the, the journey that I've had in, in such a short period of time, and and anyone that looks back at it, you go, oh, 10 years is a long time. 10 years is not that long. It's a really small stint. But when we created that it was it was from a sense of almost we were forced to you know lki kind of stopped growing you know we were in this position where i was trying to be too many things for too many people that the brand kind of stopped growing if i'm honest and we were predominantly wholesale and we were selling to some really big retailers in australia that had 60 plus retail doors and do you know they made a lot of their own brands and anyone that's been in wholesale knows that they'll sell their own product and then they'll trickle in a little bit of your brand and you work really hard to kind of you know, really build something, but then they sell their own product. So they started cutting our orders back and I'm like, okay, this is real. It's not only have I got a young child on the way, but they're cutting orders back and I'm like, what do I do here? So it was almost like I was, it was the worst thing in the world to see that happen, but it was almost the best thing ever that happened to us because it really made us think, okay, well, what are we here for? Like, I, I, I love what I do. It, I've never got in this for the money. I never started this to go, I want it to be worth a lot of money. I did it because it was just a huge passion so I think it was, I was forced to do it and, 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 but I, it really led me to be more vulnerable and go, okay, cool. I gotta, I gotta almost confront the brutal facts that we're not doing a good job here. I'm everywhere for everyone. And then I, and then I, and then I started reaching out to mentors and met another founder. Um, and there's not many founders around. So I, I, you know, and, and especially in where I grew up in Logan, there's not many, um, you know, where we're from, there's a lot of big surf brands that have started, but none of them, you don't, you know, they've, they've all sold. So I actually met the founder of uh, Penny Skateboards who grew up in Logan and, and uh, you know, I, he was, you know, it took me about nine months to get a coffee with him. He didn't, you know, he had to hassle him a lot, you know, he didn't want to catch up with me. But that was a huge shift in, in, my, in, in my career because I got to learn about someone that's built a brand and a global brand. Um, and I started reaching out to founders that had started brands and been very successful with them and just started taking those small steps. And, and I've never been in it for long term. I've always been thinking it's about the journey and enjoying it. And it takes time as well. But when you start to see it grow, I was always under the impression is how do you build something that's global and manage it? But then I realized if you set the mission and, and, and the why first and every decision goes back to that and you hire and get the right people on the bus – uh, you know, as Jim Collins would say, then you can create something quite special because they can be making decisions as a team based on the why first, not based on what just Jason wants. Let's let's break it down so it's really yeah. clear for the people listening to this, right? So you've set up your business, you've been going for over 10 years, and in your own words, it's not really happening, right? You haven't popped, you haven't been a great success. This desire to sell around the world isn't happening. Yeah. So you have to look at that. Be really honest with us. What In what areas were you failing at that time? I would suppose, um, you know, when I look back, say from a revenue perspective, um, you know, we got to about $3 million a year and we were stuck on that for, I think, about four years. So we got to that. We, we weren't. And when I mean, you know, we were and because we were so involved in action sports and motocross um, and, I, and, I, and I obviously love that sport, but I had a huge passion for fitness. We were very, you know, we were very segmented into that where we, we got we retailers didn't want to stock action sports brand at the time. Um, you know, we kind of got segmented into other you know places where brands and I was like, oh, we're really kind of, not that we don't hone in, we're a functional fitness brand um, and we have action sports athletes that wear our brand now. But I think just trying to be too many things, when you're trying to make a life jacket and you're trying to make a motocross glove and you're trying to make sportswear, you're honing in in so many different communities, that community would still wear your product. And what caused that to happen? I think just I thought it was the right thing to do. I'm like, oh, there's a really cool market here. We wake surf and... and I mountain bike and yeah. I ride bikes and I do sportswear. Why don't I just do it all? And, and, and because you don't know what you don't know. So I think, and, and it really kind of come down to when you're trying to develop that many products and you're a really small, you know, it's still, it's, it's still a sizable business, but it was still very small. Um, it takes a lot of resources to do that. So everyone is stretched in resources and, you know, we weren't, and essentially we weren't making money. And it was until I met our CFO uh, in 2018 uh, who, who, who started a day a week 
in uh, August 2018 and actually a government grant helped me pay for half of him a day a week because uh, we didn't have the money to pay for, you know, for Matt. It was, you know, we had a $20,000 government grant. So it was 40000 which helped. And he was amazing to actually even want to come and help a uh, day a week. And, and uh, you know, he plays a big part in our journey today. Um, and and it, t- it taught me to learn actually the financial side of the business too because I really didn't understand the financial side. It was just about go So were you hard. in debt at this point? We weren't, we weren't, I wouldn't say we were in debt. We were, we, we, you know, we, we went through some periods where if I'm honest, where like say 2018, it's when you're selling as a wholesale business um, and you're working in wholesale, you're waiting to be paid. And there was times where we weren't, we weren't in debt. Um, we were self-funded, but we owed money to our suppliers. And there was times where I remember being on a holiday, you know, a holiday with my wife and kids and thinking, you know, I owed a supply. I think it was, I swear, I think it was around a hundred thousand dollars. And I, and I remember talking to that supplier and we still use that supplier today. And I remember talking, I was 90 days overdue and I, and I, and I called them and I just said to them, look, I'm going to pay you. Cause I knew having a CFO, they're like, you're going to pay the bills. You're just waiting to be paid. And I just thought to myself, fuck, I don't want to keep doing this. Like, this is not fun. I don't want to be the brand that's like this anymore. Like, how am I going to change this? Like, how are we going to change this to be able to grow something bigger than ourselves and not have to constantly be chasing our tail just to pay bills? And I think that, you know, all these things just built up inside to go, I've got to find a better way. And it was when I started slowing down instead of speeding up, essentially, and going, I've got to learn. I've got to actually be more vulnerable and learn and know that I don't know everything and start listening to these books and start learning from different founders and just understanding why are we here is when it slowly started to shift. And then, and then at the time I was like, well, to put that into context of what product that became was we, we, we had, you know, we already made a women's legging or tight and, and it was selling quite well. And I thought, well, we love sportswear. Like I've grown up in fitness. My mum was an aerobics instructor. She did aerobics. I did everything growing up in, in fitness. I love training and I had a huge passion for it. And I thought, well, why can't we be a fitness brand? You know, and, but there is a lot of fitness brands out there. And I was inspired by so many, but where do we fit? So that's when I came up with, well, I love, we love streetwear and we love sportswear. And why don't we come up with, you know, a sportswear brand with a street aesthetic and create something we're passionate about as a team. And then within that, we loved women, you know, we created a women's legging. And instead of just creating uh, a, a, another women's legging, let's create one from the ground up, go to fitness communities and learn from them. And that's when we started to realize that learning from our community, instead of just our retailers and what they wanted, we could create a product for, you know, essentially I say our customer, mm-hmm. but our community. So we spent about 18 months developing this one legging called the Reptite. And it's our bestseller today. And we developed this one legging. We launched it in July, 2019. We took our time. We developed our own fabric, the fit. We got feedback every time. And when we launched that, it, it, it you know, we, we, we just said, let's launch it for the community. We won't sell it at wholesale. We'll just launch it. And it sold out in, 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 a, in a month. It sold out. And then, and, and it was crazy because we sold it. We sold out. It was like our first order. I think it was around 2,000 units, which was crazy because we wouldn't order that many units back then. But I was like, no, I think this is going to work. And then we learned e-commerce and we were obsessed with trying to understand how e-commerce works. So we're studying that, you know, learn digital marketing, learn all these little like facets of how to, you know, do to, to do, you know, media buying. And then, you know, because obviously social media ads played a big part and then localizing with the community and thought, well, our community is, is functional fitness, which is any, you know, is with functional fitness studios, gyms, anywhere where there's a trainer and a gym owner, they're our, essentially our athlete. And I became a part of one. I joined a, you know, a functional fitness gym, a fit stop back in Australia. Um, and I became a part of a community in 2017. And I was like, man, I love being a part of this. You know, we, you know, the trainers putting on a workout, we're high-fiving after like, I love being a part of this. And I got that itch again to being a part of something again and thought, well, that's where our community's at. And I had them help us. We helped them help us develop our tights. And when we launched it, it sold the first month. And then we, you know, got a reorder and it sold again. And the word of mouth started growing because of this one product. And, and then obviously COVID hit the following year, um, which no one expected to happen. Um, and, you know, we, we'd kind of been starting to really grow from July 2019 and then COVID hit us, I suppose. But yeah, it was crazy. And, and it was because we solely focused on one thing. We didn't get distracted on being everywhere. See, um, but what's fascinating here in, in the answer is that a lot of it seems counterintuitive to like popular narrative that we have about entrepreneurs. So... Like we have this idea that you've got to be fast in your decision making and you're saying, no, I had to slow down. You're talking about, 
the idea that you've got to diversify and you're saying, no, it's about focusing on one area. So what I'd be fascinated if you'd share with us, Jace, is just some of the lessons that maybe young entrepreneurs could learn from you from this counterintuitive approach. So if you're a young entrepreneur and you're saying, I need to have um, seed money, I need the startup money to be able to do it, that's mm -hmm. often a barrier to entry for people wanting to start a business. What's your advice on on, on that topic? Yeah, well, I mean, we're you know we're we're a self-funded business, and and um, you know I think my advice you know to the community would be to you know because because if you know you you've, if you don't you've got to have that drive to build something and not obviously rely on seed money to begin with if you're going to do it and it's hard i mean we we use i mean looking if i'm honest we use my mum's credit card to begin with right uh and we paid it down you know and without her she was a massive help in the early days uh massive help and i think it's i think you know what i've learned is that like you used to go to these events and it'd be like have three businesses and do all this and they're the people that have made it They've, they've made it. They've, you know, they've been doing it for 20, 30 years or they've made it and then they've either sold their businesses and they're like, okay, I've got some time now. I want to do that. But if you're focusing on one th and trying to build yourself up to create something, don't try and put yourself in too many places. You know, you don't see a professional athlete trying to be three different sports. If they're, they're the best at one sport. You know, they're the best at one sport. And I think that's the thing with a, an entrepreneur is you think you've got to be doing a bunch of different things. And I think it's like if you focus on one thing, you can be the best at that thing, Do you know. Don't put yourself in four hundred other places because you just don't have time. And I, and I, and you see it, you start to see it. I mean, it's quite. I'm I'm quite humbled that I get asked a lot of questions now. You know, from other founders and entrepreneurs, and you hear them talk, and you're like, oh wow, you're you're doing way too many things. You know, if you want that thing to be successful, you need to slow down and and sl and speed up, but speed up on that one thing. Yeah. Not try to be spreading yourself too thin. Yeah. Slow down, but speed up. That's yeah. A brilliant bit of advice, actually. What about people who are listening going, well, I don't know anything about fashion, but I want to work in the fashion business. I know nothing about media, but I want to set up a media business. Mm. How much did you know about this world? Nothing. I was a carpenter that built houses <laughs> and raced motocross. Uh, I mean, you got to learn. I mean, you know, and, and I think that's the, you know, and have a passion and, and, and think it's going to take time. I didn't, I never got into it to think I was going to be big overnight. It was not that. And I think... You know, I was probably a bit, you know, you know, say my naive, but also naive. I think na being naive is a good thing because you don't worry about what the industry is. You do what you think, you know, what you believe in and you learn from that and stay humble through it, obviously. But yeah, I, th I, th I think it's one of those things you've just got to learn. You know, I think if sometimes if you know too much, it's not a good thing either. So it's like, just, just go out and learn. And I had to, to do that. And, and from... You know, from the point of how do we make a T-shirt, you know, we had to find someone just to make a T-shirt and that was local. You know, we, we did local manufacturing and we still do, we, we're still working on local manufacturing, but, you know, from 2002 when we made some T-shirts and hats when I was at school to 2011, we were still local. I didn't do my first trip, you know, essentially overseas to say China till 2011 and, uh, and build amazing relationships. And I actually had, tra I travel overseas a lot um you know before COVID and I've just started again to meet suppliers and build relationships like it's so important even for myself to be there with the team but it was nearly 10 years before we actually did any you know offshore manufacturing supplies because we just didn't know how to do it so we just took our time and this day and age social media and the pace of things it's a little bit quicker than probably what it was back then but you just have to learn um I just think it takes time but there's something that we haven't addressed that I think is almost present in everything you've just shared with us, which is about courage or bravery to actually take the leap. So what advice would you give based on your experiences to anyone listening to this about that, that maybe wants to do it, but's hesitant. They can think of lots of reasons why not to do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I probably, um, my personality, I, I suppose I've got, you know, maybe, uh, you know, my personality is quite, have that drive and you could say you know whether it's galvanizing um yeah we do a lot of a lot of books um you know when we've just finished a book called the six working genius so i get to learn a lot about myself because i ask that question a lot you know I, I ask that question why why have i done that like why did i just go out and you know m m built relationships with athletes suppliers you know retailers you know and you know the team and just and did that like why did i have that i don't and I, I think it's, you know, I, I, I don't, I think one, you know, a few different things that I've learned over the years from different, you know, whether it's courses or people is, you know, you just, you know, everybody else is just as nervous, you know, when you start to realize and you start to meet, 
you know, I was, I was very lucky to spend some time um, and learn from, from a billionaire recently and, and literally walked around one of our retail stores and I got to learn so much and realizing how humble he was and realizing that he was sharing books with me and he was, they have the same struggles. You go, well, we're all human. Um, and, I, and I think we, we, you know, we all can get quite nervous, you know, even say today, this is a huge opportunity for us. So I was so excited to come on the podcast and I, you know, I was like, oh, I can be really nervous or I could just be myself. Just don't worry about it. Be myself and, and enjoy the journey. You know, if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter Do you know, I think for anyone, you just, you got to put yourself out there, but it's also one of those things you've, you know, you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. Like fail forward. It's, you know, the reason we're in this position is from failing forward essentially. Um, but I, I, I do ask myself that a lot and you know, with my upbringing and childhood and, you know, my parents splitting up when I was younger and I was 13 and, you know, my, my journey growing up, why did I get given this drive and passion to just keep going regardless of whatever happens? Um, and, you know, because it has, you know, it has been quite a long journey essentially since being a teenager, but I just, I, you know, I think that's, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm just thankful to be in that position, but I also just look at it and go, well, you know, just get at it and go and learn and, you know, every day is an opportunity to learn something new. When you say that, like, you, that your childhood shaped you and it's given you that drive and you've asked the questions, what lessons have you learned about how you can engineer that drive? So there might be people that haven't come from a broken home like you did or people that weren't pursuing a sporting career that, that ultimately ended in failure in that regard. So without having to go through those experiences, what have you learned that people could do and employ in their lives to get a similar drive to you? I think there's a couple of things. I think who you surround yourself with. I think that's one of the big important things, who you surround yourself with. The five people who you surround yourself with is so true who you become to get that drive. So you need to surround yourself with the right people. You know, and I, and I have, you know, when I'm, you know, to keep that drive going, I surround myself with a great group of, you know, people. Um, what does that mean, a great group? Well, I think it's from all different aspects, whether it's from business or personal life, um, people that pick you up when you're down, people that, you know, to, to have that drive and constantly go, you know, and, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm a massive fitness advocate and I'm huge. I mean, I'm training for a marathon at the moment uh, in July. I, I have a goal to go under sub three and, you know, I want to do a half Ironman and another triathlon as well this year at the start of the year and, and a half Ironman after the marathon. And, we have a crew that we run with and, and you know, we, we all pick each other up, you know, and motivate each other when we don't feel like running, we all run together. I think it was about five of us getting ready for this marathon. We've all got the same coach and, you know, we're all pushing each other to be better. Do you know, we, you know, the, the, the workload to get in, to get ready for this. Um, and, you know, knowing having two young kids in the business, I have to train at different times, really early in the morning, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning to get ready but I know that they push me to be better. And the same goes with work. And I, and I think around what we've created at LSKD and, 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 and within our office environment and the team. And, you know, I'm not saying we have the best culture. I'm definitely not. We've always got something to learn. But I think with our mission and values and what we created and how we recruit as a team, that we all motivate each other. And I feel like that, you know, if I'm not perfect on a day and I'm not, I'm not feeling, you know, 100%, there's a teammate around me that, you know, will essentially pick me up. Hey, are you all right? Like, you know, we, we've created this, if I look at it in my own experiences in our workplace and, you know, and, you know, with one of our values, sweep the sheds and, you know, 1% better every day, there's always someone on and, and you know, we, we have a gym in the office where we train together, uh, you know, 1 p.m. on a Tuesday and Thursday. You don't, you don't realise that going and training with the team, I don't make every session, but going and high-fiving after how much that picks you up and makes you feel great to want to be better wow, this is amazing around me happening right now. Wow. Like, do you know, and I think that when I look at that, you know, to, to keep that drive, the team, you don't realize how much the team picks you up and keeps you driven if you, you know, you get the right people around you. And at one point in the journey, I was like, I was so hard on myself with wanting LKI to work that I was almost making it fail. And when I when we shifted to LSKD, I was like, man, I just want to have fun as well. I really want to have fun. Explain how you were making it fail. Well, I was, I, I was, I was, I was just, I, I was almost like to the point of like, it was, everything had to be my decision. So if somebody came up with an idea and I didn't like the idea, I would put it down or I would, you know, you were almost not, I, I probably, we didn't have, I would say our culture wasn't that good. And, and it was because of me, because I thought I had to make every decision. I yeah. thought, you know, it, it, but when you start getting your team involved and asking their opinions and getting their decisions, 
and helping it and getting everyone around the table to come up with an idea. Hey, that's great. Let's go. Mm. Oh, what? That was my idea. And I think <clears throat> when it goes back to one purpose or mission, that makes it very powerful where I was kind of forcing it. Well, that makes sense? Give us an example of that then of where maybe somebody's come up with an idea that the old mm. you would have just dismissed it out of hand. But now that you've got this sense of purpose that you've gone, okay, let's put it through that filter and let's see what emerges. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, it's a great question. I mean, there's two, there's two, two things, um, two things. One of them's a little bit separate. So I had a t one of our team actually, uh, and it's a funny story. I don't think of our head of brand, Dylan, he was one of our first team members. He actually designed the Ellis Ketty logo. And in the early days, you know, he, he was showing up to work a little later, you know, but he was actually stuck in traffic and you could see he was pissed off and I would just rouse on him. What the fuck, you know, why are you late? You know, what are you doing? And when I started kind of understanding what I was doing, he left, he left for 18 months and, um, you know, I was an idiot and, uh, he left. And then, you know, I started to realize I was listening to his books and growing up and being like, why didn't I just, and these courses, I was like, why don't I just ask if he's okay? <laughs> Are you all right, bro? Do you need any help? Like, is everything okay? You know? And, and, and then I ended up calling him and saying, man, I would love you to come back. You're a legend. Like, do you want, and he's like, I've learned a lot. And I'm like, dude, I've learned a lot too. I made a lot of mistakes. Do you want to come back? I love that. So, uh, I, and when he came back, it just really made me realize it's like somebody, you know, and, and we're, we're quite, we're very flexible. It's for us, it's don't be late to a meeting. You know, everyone gets stuck in traffic. I have kids. So, you know, there's days I'm, I'm running late because the kids, I, you know, I understand things happen. We, we, you know, it's not about tracking minutes, it's output. But that example, I think was probably one of the most prominent where I was just like, well, you know, really rousing and not actually just asking if he's okay and understanding from you know, where their perspective is coming from. And I think that goes to in the office in, in an environment where you're looking at a design, instead of going, oh, I don't like that. Instead of going, oh, where did you get the idea? Where did the inspiration come from? What, what, what are you thinking? And then you listen to them, you go, wow, I never thought of it like that. Where are you just quick to jump? And I'll be very quick to jump because I thought they were probably out to, oh, they want to do a bad job. But no one comes to work to want to do a bad job. But, you know coming off a job site environment and, you know, my up, you know, not my upbringing, but like who I was, I always thought people might be out to, you know, do a bad job. I don't know. You know, I was young. I was, you know, and I think that, that, that taught me a lot um, instead of asking or just going and asking someone if they're okay or where is it coming from and picking up the phone or chatting to them one-on-one -on -one and being very transparent with them as well and creating that transparent, you know, you know, kind of culture, I think has really, has really made that shift. I mean, as the brand gets bigger, it does get harder because, you know, there's a lot more people, but I think that's the next challenge that I'm learning as well as a team is as it gets bigger, there's more team members and making sure that everyone still has well, their Well, that's day. what I was going to ask you because it's referred to as Dunbar's number, isn't it? That once you get above 150 employees, it's almost impossible to know everybody's details or like, yeah. how are you? And I think that comes down to like, you've got to be out there. Do you know, I always like to think like 40% of my time is working within the team. Um, you know, we don't have offices. It's, you know, there's meeting rooms. I work, I work pretty much, I work in the middle of the office, you know, on a desk. Don't really have an office or a desk. I kind of just take a spare desk um, and teams working right. from home. <laughs> um, and, but I like to sit within, diff, you know, whether it's in different departments or just walk around and talk or when I'm going to the retail stores now to meet the teams and just walk around and talk to them. And cause that's when you get the best ideas, you know, you just in a quick conversation and you learn and then you can go back and, you know, I like to think 40% of my time is spent just doing that because that's how you can learn quicker to help make better decisions on what everyone's struggling and then connect teammates with teammates and try and create, you know, the, the, you know, trying to create the brand in a way that everyone feels a part of it. Cause that's really important. And the reason why your business is growing is cause your business is now successful. So, You've come into an industry you know nothing about. You've taken a big leap. You've made a million mistakes, as we've talked about. Yeah. 10 years down the line, you're not making any serious money. You're having to ring up suppliers to try and pay the bills. And then things change, right? So you have children and it forces you to find your why. Can you link those two for us? Why did having children change everything for you? What was the moment? Well, I d it was it was interesting when I found out my wife was pregnant. I was so excited, but I was so nervous, and I was like, "Wow, like we're you know I'm in I'm in the real world now. Do you know I have to put my son through school, and you know I, we didn't have a lot growing up. Do you know I was very, I had a great childhood, great upbringing, but we didn't have a lot growing up. Um, do you know we, we, you know as in in terms of you know we didn't I had to buy my first dirt bike. Um, do you know I had to you know to get into motor, to racing motor. I worked a local job at the local BP service station. 
I think I've saved three or f- three three and a half thousand dollars, and my grandparents actually went half for me to buy my first, uh, you know, motocross bike because my, you know, and not that it, you know they wanted to, but and my we worked, you know, my parents worked really hard. We had a plant nursery. I was working, you know, working in the nursery at a young age, helping at markets on a Sunday, you know, sell at the local markets, out, you know, plants, and so I think when it just happened, I was like, okay, well, I want to make sure I can you know, I want to do a great job. You know, I, I want to make sure that I can, you know, be a great dad and, you know, be able to put my son through school and make sure. And, and it wasn't the fact of just making lots of money to be able to do that. It was the fact of giving the brand some certainty that it was going to live on to give me a career. Mm. I think that was the big thing because it was really no certainty around the brand because we were, you know, we orders were getting cut back and I was like, okay, am I going to have, is this going to be, is this going to, is this going to work or is it going to fail? So what did you find? Like if I was to say to you now, what was the why that you came up with in this period that oh, I'd, define everything? What was it? Well, if I look at the why, it, it was our mission to inspire people to chase the vibe. Right. I think when it goes to the why is because I thought with the mission that we have, I love fitness, I love sports, I love adventure. I've grown up around it. If I go to, you know, to create something bigger than ourselves was to inspire people to chase the vibe. If I'm doing that, you know, I don't know who I, I get inspired by watching what other people are achieving and vice versa. So I thought if we create that, and this is for the business side, this is for the business, this is, you know, to, to create yeah. something. And then when I had, you know, I ran my first half marathon in 2019 um, and got, in, got, got really excited to do events again after finishing racing motocross in 2010. Um, I wanted to inspire my kids, you know, I was like, well, when I'm out, you know, when I did my first half marathon, my heart rate was wrong, like average 196, I went to 210, I put myself in the hurt locker, my face was all munged because I could hardly, you know, I was just in the hurt locker, but I was like, well, I'm inspiring my son's at the finish line, you know, he's, he, he, I'm inspiring him, you know, and when he's, a, you know, when he gets older, he's going to see that, that I achieved that and, and, and I'm inspiring him. So when I'm in the hurt locker doing an event, you know, hopefully I'm inspiring my kids. So I think it all kind of tied together as one. And, and, and I was like, I want to be the same person at home as I am at the office, as I am in this interview, you know, in this podcast. As I, like, I just want to be the same yeah. person. I don't want to have to fake who I am and who I'm not. So if we can live to that mission and anyone that wants to come be a part of that mission within our team, we can create something quite but inspiring. How does, tell me how that then in, sort of informs your decision making because encouraging people to chase the vibe, like it's quite ethereal, right? Yes. You know, what does it mean? How do you chase the vibe? Everyone's vibe is different. Yeah. Our vibe might not be theirs. You know, you can ask all those questions. Yeah. So to really drill this down for business people, entrepreneurs that are listening to this, how did you then take those words mm-hmm. and help that to inform like the direction of the whole business? Well, it's through, we, we, we class it into three, sport, fitness and adventure. So sports, obviously, with you know athletes and different sports, yeah. fitness, which is in fitness and adventure, which was our adventure pillar with content creators. So we kind of class it because it is it's it's open to interpretation of how big what is chase the vibe, um, which is exciting because it can be quite broad, long term if you want it to be. But we kind of broke it down into sport, fitness, and adventure, um, knowing that we as a team and myself grew up doing all these different things. But then we tied it back to sportswear which kind of created that. So I think it's a great question because it can be quite open. Um, and it was when we're making a decision, like, is it inspiring our community, right. you know, through sport, fitness and adventure? How do we inspire our community through storytelling? Through So every decision you ask yourself, does that inspire the Yeah, if we're, we're in an office, we're in a meeting and we're going to do some, we're, we're making a decision for a campaign. We're like, is it inspiring our community? Is that inspiring our community to, you know, get out and chase the vibe through sport, fitness and adventure? So it's really helped us to, keep an alignment of the brand to not just go left of field that doesn't, you know, we want to create something that is quite inspiring and not only inspires us, but our community. So it, when we're trying to make certain decisions, we'll be like, Oh, that is that, is that actually inspiring our community? Like, is that, does that, no, it doesn't really like, you know, I I don't think we do that. I think we try this. So that would be more inspiring. So it, it honestly, it has helped us make decisions every year and every season and every, whether it's through a drop that, ties back to that and it, it sounds quite broad but when we're you know we're in it you know especially when you're in a meeting trying to come up with something you know every day you're yep. working on whether it's a collection release whether it's you're working with an athlete whether you're going to an event um you know it, it, it and we always lead with that first yep. you know we were recently at an event in in miami uh what a palooza and there's fifty thousand there and 
we weren't trying to talk about the product. We were, you know, we were, I was so lucky to have so many conversations. It was talking about the mission and values yeah. and where we came from in our story. And, and, you know, and then it was all we have out. That in, that in itself is brilliant advice, I think, for people. Because I think one of the mistakes I've made often over the years is I feel like, you know, if you've got something to sell, you have to literally say, this is what I'm selling and this is the price. And actually, people need to realize that that's not what you do. You talk about what you've got and why it's amazing for people and why it might change their lives and why it might inspire them. As soon as you start doing the hard sell, I think they switch off. Yeah. It's about inspiring them and then allow them to find the brand, find yeah. the product and decide for themselves whether it's inspiring rather than you telling them this is inspiring you. Yeah, 100%. And I, and I look back at like it didn't, it took time. You know, it did take time to figure what that meant. And, and, and me, you know, I used to, you know, I, I used to go on the road a lot and sell the brand to retailers and you had to do that a lot. And I was like, man, I just doing that just doesn't, I, got, I, I really got sick of doing it yeah. because you're forcing to sell something. So I just got to experience all these learnings of like rocking up and trying to sell product and sell it and sell it. And I was like, well, it, you know, it just doesn't, you know, how do you get inspired by something, you know, because there's a lot of brands out there and, and you know, how do we think of, and, and it's, a, it's a, how do you create something for the next 50 years? Yeah. So know? tell us then how anyone listening to this can identify their own mission and you spoke about the values as well. Give us some of the ideas on how you came to identify these with such clarity. Yeah, I, when I look at it, I think it's to create what we created. Um, it was a team of us, so yep. it wasn't just me. So I got a lot of advice, but I always, you know, it wasn't like a corporate thing. We didn't, you know, we didn't go hire an agency to do it. But when I look at, when I look back, I honestly, I, I looked at my upbringing. I looked at my childhood upbringing. I looked at, I loved all those things. I was, I did so many different sports growing up. You know, I, I looked a lot at myself growing up, but then I looked at a lot of our team and what they did growing up and they did similar things, you know? Uh, and, and I was like, well, we, we all have a similar, we did so many different sports. We were passionate about action sports. We were passionate about fitness. So when we created it, I really just looked at what we did and I said, well, why don't we create something that's a reflection of all of us? Yeah not have to try something and create, real yeah something real and authentic like I, I you know and i always thought if i ever had the opportunity to be on a podcast like this you can't fake that you just can't fake it so i i, I really just looked at our upbringing and, and then tell us about the values so you reference some sweeping the you're wearing one, one you're one drinking there. from one yeah yeah, yeah. So people that are listening to this they obviously this is on youtube so they can watch it yeah yeah you're listening your t-shirt says one percent better every day and the water bottle you're drinking from says move fast and break shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there six? Yeah. There's six. Let's so, run through them. All right. What they so there's enjoy why. the journey. <clears throat> why? Why is that important? Oh, okay. I can go through each first. Okay, cool. cool. Great. Um, so enjoy the journey was created based, um, you know, have fun, be yourself, embrace diversity. Um, enjoy the journey was something where we knew that the journey gets tough. You know, it gets tough. It's hard. And I think when we, you know, when you're going through those, you know, you know, it sounds easy to talk about it now, but there's, you know, where, where, you know, when you're going through changes, anything in any, any part of your life, you've got to remember to go back and enjoy the journey. So when we created that, and I'll, and I'll give some context to how we created our values. So we actually just finished listening to a book um, called Delivering Happiness, um, which was the founder of Zappos. And we were listening to that book uh, at, at the end of 2020. And I was like, wow, we've got a lot of work to do in community experience. We've, this was really cool. And, I, and then I, I, I got to, we, we heard how they create their values. And I was like, well, let's create our values by an anonymous form. And we put in our Slack channel. Um, Jade, I had a community experience. She, you know, she, put, she put it in and helped us put it all together. And uh, there was about 30 of the team um, that filled it out. And we asked them what their values are, what they think. And they filled it all out. And obviously we'd all been listening to different books and they filled it all out. And then we started printing it out on the t onto just desks. And we started just writing on it and, and going, do we like this? Do we think we can make a decision off this every day? You know, if, if we've got to make a decision, can we use this value? And it took us about six months and we just kept scribbling it out. And we just made it a bunch of fun, to be honest, you know, enjoy the journey, right? So that's how the values got created. It took time and we just kept, you know, working on it and refining it and refining it. And it was very impromptu because we didn't want it to be, have to make it today because it's going to take time. Yeah. So one of them was enjoy the journey. And that, and, that, and, that, and that was part of that. You've got to enjoy it. It is hard and it's not going to be easy. So how do you do that then? So how does that inform a decision that you're making when you sat around the table with your team? Well, you got to have a laugh and you got to have fun, don't you? Do you know, quite right. You know, you got to, you got to, you know. I mean, if I'm honest, um, the office, ta the office likes to take the piss out of me a little bit. If I'm <laughs> honest, they uh, they've got a thing going called Jason Daniel Bingo at the moment, 
Um, What's that? Well, I'm, I'm, if you know, my vocabulary is not the best. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't uh, the sm- the brightest kid in school, so. I do like to, um, you know, it's pretty funny, but I do like to, in the heat of things, I do like to say things that are a little bit of uh, out of context. But uh, A uh, malapropism. Yeah. Like the wrong word in the wrong context. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll hide that. under a hole and just, you know, yeah. joke about it. So, <laughs> you know, I'll just... I'll just Put a rabbit out of a just, frying pan. Yeah. You <laughs> know, all of that, yeah. So, you know, they've written all these words that I say and, and Keith... Our COO has a list of you know phrases that I've said over the over the years, and and then they've all written it down, and then they'll be up in front of the team in a, a Tuesday meeting, or we're in a meeting, and they're all they're all kind of you know marking off words that I might say uh, or oh, constantly yeah. say, yeah. and then one of them's going to get up and say bingo. So they haven't got bingo yet, but I've been away for a couple of weeks. So that's I mean that's some stuff we do because you know don't take yourself too seriously. I suppose. Um, Can and- I just say like I really love the fact that your first value is about enjoying life. Because I have a lot of entrepreneurs or business people or, you know, young kids with incredible drive come to me. And I talk to them about make sure you enjoy it. And you can see a bit of confusion in their face. And they're thinking, hold on, that's not the message I've heard everywhere else. And it feels like we're telling every young person at the moment, life isn't about enjoying yourself. Life is about achieving. Life is about getting to a moment. Life is about building something. Life is about making your mark and earning your money and doing all this stuff. And I think that then they forget that, if you don't enjoy it, when it comes to end, what on earth was the point? We've forgotten yeah. to have the conversation about enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. And, and it's a really vital part of life because yeah. literally there's no point building anything, creating anything, having any form of success if it doesn't bring you happiness. No, I agree. And I think we always look back on moments when we, you know, when we've achieved something or, you know, say we went through, you know, peak, you know, Christmas, Black Friday last year and the team achieved amazing things. It's like, we've really got to make sure we enjoy this and remember this, you know, like each moment as a team, because it's huge, you know, like we've just finished a big event in the U S and we're starting to grow the community. And it's like, I can't wait to get back to the office to share this and go, guys, this is a milestone we've all worked on. Like, let's remember this. Like, you know, we have to make sure we enjoy the little things and don't get me wrong. It's fuck, it's, it's hard at times, right? Like it's not easy, but you know, I think that's a big part of it is, you know, because it is when you look, you know, in 10 years time, we're going to look back and go, man, those times were so fun. Like it was so hard. And I mean, and you read the story around Shoe Dog, such an inspiring book. And, you know, as he says in it, I'd go back and do it all over again. Yep. You know, it was, it was the hardest thing in the world, but it was the funnest thing and he misses it, you know? And I think it makes you realize and have that self-awareness to be like, oh, don't, you know, don't just, rem- yeah, don't miss this because it goes, at a, it goes in a heartbeat. Like, so that's number one. Yeah. And that's hard. And next one is create a community. So we developed create a community because I think, you know, we, we, we transitioned from a wholesale business to uh, e-commerce and now we're going Omni with opening us, st- yeah. you know, now we're opening stores. Uh, and our first store we opened when we opened our new office last, the start of last year. So we have a new office uh, we just built with a gym. We fulfilled from there. Um, and part of that create a community was there was a few mistakes we made during Black Friday 2020. You know, we did over 50,000 orders and it took us over six weeks to fulfill. We're leading up to Christmas still fulfilling them. We made a ton of mistakes. And as a team, we created that because we just, I mean, it was just, we learned so much and we thought we were doing an okay job and we weren't. And when you think of what create a community means, it's not only with internally, but it's externally with our community. And I don't like calling our community customers. I, I don't like saying the word customer. I like saying it's our community. I think because, you know, you want to be a part of something. Um, but whenever we're making a decision, it's like, well, remember, we've got to create a community here. So how is that helping us create a community? Um, whether it's online, offline, and knowing we're e-commerce, we have to work, you almost, you have to work twice as hard to create the community online. Your product, you've got to make sure you develop the best in the world product because you can't hide when you're shipping product individually because they can post it anywhere if it's not right. So you got to work really hard to get the best product for your community. And you know, that's why we, you know, working really hard to try and create the best product in the world for them. And then how do you engage that community? I mean, our Facebook uh, community, LSKD community just on Facebook is over 60,000. So what have you done awesome. right to engage your community? I mean, we do loads of things. Um, one thing we've done recently, which is locally, but I think whatever you do locally expands, uh, you know, does expand globally, um, is we have a gym at our office um, on the second level and uh, you can do everything. You, you Functional fitness, you can lift, you can you know, do CrossFit, big outdoor area, so you could do yoga on the rooftop. We actually give that space to local gyms 
um, on a Saturday or a Sunday, so they can help them. Mem- they can give their members an experience, which helps them create, you know, retention for their members um, to come to our location. So they, yeah, they could use. They, they we every weekend it's booked out, and yeah, um, yeah we're not only creating a community with local gyms, like with the local mem- yeah, yeah. the members of that gym, but they're also they're creating their community by taking them somewhere. So you're giving value. And expecting nothing. Yeah, to yeah, we don't charge. They come and yeah. use our space. They can shop in our store after. You know, we have a coffee shop out the front. Um, Love that. You know, of, of our of our location as well. And you know, and I think it's not about doing big extravagant things all the time. I think it's about the small things. You know, we, we do a lot of events. We're always popping up, and it doesn't need to be a big event. You know, you just have a little three by three shade and be somewhere and create a community, have a conversation. It could be one conversation could change someone's life about our mission and values. Well, that fits, doesn't it, about thinking local and yet expanding global. It's mm. what you're doing is it's taking the small step in your immediate your immediate vicinity. E- exactly right. You know, exactly right. So it's the little things, I think, and that's something that, you know, I think goes a long way over time and consistency. Um, you know, you know, that's, yeah. Also, I would advise, you know, young entrepreneurs listening to this that it also gives you a parachute because if you have built a brand and you're entirely reliant on other businesses carrying your brand if you're piggybacking on wholesalers if you're in other people's stores if you're reliant on them to keep on ordering from you then actually you're completely out of control of your business yeah as soon as you've I've experienced that you, well there you go that's how you started thinking great i'll get into that store and they can sell a hundred thousand units and then i'll make some money as soon as you build your community and you've got your people, no one can take that away from you. No. Well, yes, they can. You can. You can mess up. You if, can make if, if we lose focus on what we're doing and don't if work you lose hard focus on your community. It. But other than that, you have a an insurance package right there that you've got your community there with you on the journey, and I think that is invaluable. Yeah, exactly right. And I think as you get bigger and bigger, you've got to work twice as hard to to stay focused on yeah. that don't get distracted stay focused and you know and i think and i'm not saying that's gonna be, that's you know that is a challenge in itself but you've got to work really hard um to make sure you look after that Number so three. the third one um the third one is sweep the sheds um so you guys might know where that one came from but uh big fan of the book legacy huge fan and and we'd all listen to it um as a team and i and i related a lot to that book to be honest just you know, my, my actual, my, my, you know, my one side of my, my dad's side of the family is from New Zealand and um, we all listened to that book and um, we just felt that Sweep the Sheds, you know, no one is bigger than the team, no one is too big to do the small things. And when I look at that value and, and from a, a level just in, in the office, you know, no one has a car park. You know, I don't have my own car park. If I'm, if I'm running a touch late, you know, I'm on the other side of the street on the grass, you know, like that's just how it is. You're first in your best dress, first in best dress to get, to get a car park. Um, you know, no one has an office. Um, you know, it, 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 it's that sweep the sheds mentality, Love it. you know, get in and help the team, you know, empty a bin. Like it's the little things that make a big difference. And, you know, it was a perfect example where we were just at the event and we're all getting in there and helping, you know, there was 15 of us, uh, you know, and we're all, and, and we're all like, Hey, go sweep the sheds. You know, like it was just, it, you know, you create it fun, but we're all there to help each other out. And, and, you know, if we need to. That's a, a parallel where the, an interview we did with, um, a, uh, a business guy here in the UK called Rick Lewis and uh, he d- spoke to us about his values and one of his is if you think you're too important to take the bins out we'll get you a job just taking the bins out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until you so, understand it so yeah there's a real parallel there with uh, with your own sweep in the sheds yeah exactly right and I think that's that's a really important one as you get bigger and bigger because you can get too busy uh, it's easy to just not do it when you get busy because someone else will do it. Um, but it's like, no, no, if you help the, a teammate do something or you put your, hey, I'll give you a hand. Hey, I need, you need to do that? I'll give you a hand. No worries. Like it just creates that sense of being a part of something, but also you know that you can sweep the sheds and you're never too big to do the little things. There's a nice story that that reminds me of um, a guy called Alan Do- uh, Deutschman wrote a book called Change or Die. And he tells a story about uh, Ray Kroc. You know, yep, the founder yep. of McDonald's. Yep. And when he'd go and do visits, like people would remember him going and picking up rubbish in the car park or he'd teach them how to clean the mop bucket properly. And this was when it, yeah, like, McDonald's cool. was massive. But yeah. that was the legacy that people yeah. remembered him for, not the brilliant strategic decisions he made with McDonald's. And what's funny is when you're doing all those things, you're learning too. Because you're working with your team and learning on the ground, you know, just doing those little things that yep. most people would think, you know, they don't need to do that, but... Yeah, it's so important to do. And I think having that value keeps yourself accountable. 
right? Like you keep it with all these values. You're like, I have to make decisions based on this every day. So I need to do that, yeah. you know, because there is times you're just under the pump and you, you, you're, you know, you're, you're thinking of 400 other things you've got to get done for the day. That's, you know, the joys of when you're you know, really, you know, when it's really growing. So, you know, you have to make sure you keep yourself accountable to that. Um, and I, yeah, I'm a big fan of what Ray Kroc done. That, 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 that movie was epic. Yeah. Um, the next one? Do you want the next one? Yeah. yeah number, uh, so the next one. on number four? Four, oh. yeah. So there's a better way to do it. Find it. So this 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 one was created mainly basically as a team. We created it um, was it was really just because as you get bigger, it's easier to just go in and invest in just doing it where it's like there's always a better way to do something. Just we got to find it, you know. So if we're coming up with a decision or we're working on something or a project – um, or, you know, you, you know, no matter how big you get, you've got to be, you know, in, in, when you're a self-funded business, you don't have all the money in the world to go and spend on something, but you also want to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons based on the mission and values. So we kind of created this one <coughs> based on, you, you, there's always going to be a better way yeah. to do so something. So give us an example, like what? Oh, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Damien always has the best questions. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. Okay. Yeah. It's great. Um, I mean, if I'm exa- like, I mean, I spent, I spent a lot of time in the marketing product team and when we're coming up with a say when we you know i get to sit a lot in the marketing department and i was i you know I was, if i'm if i'm sitting in the marketing department and i give an example there we you know we might be working on a project that you know whether it's for say black friday or a campaign or a new fabric we're releasing or a new collection and we might be thinking of something extravagant but then there might be a better way to do it by using another I suppose another avenue of doing something because it relates back to our community, because we're trying to inspire our community, chase the vibe. We might think of something super extravagant, but then it's like, well, if we keep it simple because it's going to inspire our community and be more relatable, there's probably a better way to do it. <laughs> Let's find a way to do it to inspire the community, not so much doing it because we think it's cool. Is it, if, if that sounds not, I hope it doesn't sound too confusing because it's like there's, they all kind of interlink with each other when we're making a decision. Does it, Example, I don't know if this helps because I'm, 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 I'm just wondering about how we can explain this for listeners. We, um, we did an interview with a British comedian called Russell Kane and he spoke about um, how somebody had taught him the principle of what he called river jumping. So, it, so the idea is that if you're stuck in one train of thought, jump in a different river and go... On. So in his case, it said, you might look at how a boxer prepares and compare it to yep. then what can I learn as a comedian and it's like I need to do the hard yards in the gym before I can stand under the bright lights yeah. and deliver a stand-up show so you might look at a boxer's routine and translate some lessons there yeah yeah. Well, do you do anything like that where you go into other rivers to go and see what they're doing and think about how they can apply to you all the time yeah as in researching and, and going out there and, and probably also to give some context back to that it's like if you've got a th- just a thousand dollar budget to spend on something but you know but it's like there can be a better way to do it we could get it for eight hundred dollars we just got to find it do you know we got to find it like we can't you know if you've got to stick to a budget there's got to be a better way to execute that to that so if you put it back to say from a you know you might have to stick to a budget to achieve something well how do we do it and do you know do more with less essentially so you know there's a better way to do it find it do more with less um you know that 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 essentially is how that's broken down so you know because as you're growing it's easy to spend more money hey we've got to stick to a budget here but we might be able to get twice as much done because we found a better way because we're just like let's find better let's look at you know as you said then like let's go to other avenues and find other ways of doing things or you know research or or you know drive a different way to work you know we would call it every day you know like and, and, and get outside the bubble and find something else that we might get inspired by to do something better. I um, remember Greg Hoffman, the former yeah. chief marketing officer of Nike, he said to us, sometimes being yeah, his book having no money is the best thing because the lack of money drives the creativity. Yeah. His book is amazing. Oh, it's incredible, yeah. isn't it? Very inspiring. One of the great books. Yeah. Right, number five. Uh, move fast, break shit. All right. This is the one on your water bottle. <laughs> Explain yeah. it. Well, it's not physically breaking shit. So um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, so it's essentially the same thing, it, you know, which all ties into each other. And we wanted to create a bit of fun around it where it's like, if we need to get something done, let's just move fast. And if, you know, it's fail forward, dare to think differently, nothing's <coughs> impossible. Yeah. So, you know, move fast, break shit is essentially a, a, a value term to, you know, get shit done. You know, if we need to make a decision, we go, well, are we inspiring our community to chase the vibe? 
let's just do it, fail forward and let's give it a go. Like there's what, what, what's the worst that's going to happen. It's not, it's not off brand. It's not like you, you know, as you get bigger, um, you know, you can create too many rules in place before achieving something or doing something. And I've had brands come to me and, and say, how do you do stuff so quick? You know, how are you getting so much content out? Like what? What are you? What are you guys doing? And I'm like, well, we go back to that value, move fast, well, break that, shit, and make sure it ties back to 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 the mission too. Yeah. Because then you know, and if we make a mistake, which we have, we'll learn from it and go, okay, like, and because it, it's not like we're going left to field too much. Where you know, we're we're still there's still the one plus one equals three test and learn, but as also the, you know, don't, you know, just don't, you know, you know, think differently and push it, you know, and get it done. But I'm, but I'm intrigued by one of the lessons you spoke about post 2017 when when the business really caught fire was this idea of slowing down to speed up. So how does that apparent contradiction fit with this new value of... Well, I think once you're clear, once you're clear with your why and once you're clear with your, you know, mission values and once you're clear, well, you, you know, and, and that hone in effect then yeah you speed up and when and when i and when i put into context with move fast break shit you know in a day-to-day environment when you're in the office and you're making decisions from marketing you know some stuff takes time you know developing product we can spend 12 plus months on developing a product it's a little harder in those contexts right because you're developing a product and you're fitting fabrication but when you're thinking of a decision you need to make on the day because you're coming up with a new marketing idea for the community or you're you know you're talking to the in community experience and we need to do something you move fast just make a decision that's the best interest for the community the break shit thing is fun right like you gotta you gotta enjoy the journey so i think that you know it, it, it yeah when it's slow down to speed up it's slow down to understand what the why was but now we know who we are and now we know where we're going okay it doesn't mean you know as as we grow in in you know as we grow globally there's still a lot of strategic side of the brand that we've got to get done. We don't just go, oh, let's just go and do that today um, because are we getting distracted on focusing on you know, certain areas of the, of the brand to get right first before we go to the next stage? Um, but there's a lot of day-to-day decisions that need to be made every single day, every single minute that is very micro that you need to make very quickly. Um, you know, you've got the macro decisions you're making from a, I suppose, a strategic point of view that you're working on for long term, yep. but then you've got the small decisions you need to make, whether it's through, you know, especially marketing because, uh, you know, social media is one of the biggest platforms. You've got to make decisions on there every single day of how you, you know, create a community and, sure. you know, talk to your community every single day, you know, so it's, 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 it's certain areas that you move fast to get it done. Um, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, not making a decision is worse than making a decision. So we, you know, we tend to use that value when we need to make a decision. Um, and the final one is on your t-shirt, I think. Yeah. 1% better every day. Um, so yeah, so, and we, we literally just release a values collection. Um, it's just super cool. So we thought we'd share them with that community and yeah, we put them on our website and we try to share everything that we're doing as a brand to make our community feel a part What's of it. What's been the most popular one in your community? I would say, um, well, they've all been quite popular, to be honest, but I, I would say a 1% better every day and move fast break shit have been mm. two of the most popular. Right. Um, but I mean, 1% better every day, 100%. I mean, that has been the most relatable. It's, it's you know, it's it's probably one of my favorites, if I'm honest. Um, they all, they're all my favorites, but that's a, that's a key. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, it, it, it's, it's what we do every day. Um, and there's going to be days, as we said, you know, at the start of the, start of the podcast is where you're not feeling a hundred percent, you know, you, you don't want to do it, but they're the days where 1% better matters the most in terms of you might learn one thing, you're still being 1% better. Mm. Um, you know, constantly learning and growing, um, I think is the most important thing. And it comes back to what you said at the beginning of this conversation, which is about consistency. And I think that for people listening to this, I would just love to give them the message that consistency is key if you want to have an impact. I think that the world is Correct. littered with people whose application doesn't match their talents and their abilities. And there are some wonderfully talented, amazing, incredible people walking around who just didn't apply themselves. And I think if you don't try, then you'll never know. And that's the saddest thing of all. You have to just give it a go. Just give it a go. A hundred percent. And I, and I look back, well, I think about it and I was like, well, how do, how does a, you know, kid from Logan, you know, we you know, we started, you know, a brand where we're based, how do we create something globally? You know, what, what, you know, and, and you don't believe in yourself at some point. You're like, oh, we can't. But, you know, through that journey, I was like, imagine if we could create something global 
you know, from Logan in Queensland. Like, imagine if we could do that. Like, why can't we? What's stopping us? We just have to believe in ourselves. And, you know, there was points in, in, in the journey where we didn't. I was like, oh, maybe, we, you know, we can't. But as you start to build confidence and get around the right people, you go, well, maybe we can. You know, you, as you said, and what we said is it's all about consistency and, and all about learning. And it's the same in retail. Now, you know, we have three stores and we're opening, uh, you know, one in, in Bondi Junction and one in Miranda in Sydney in, in the next few months. And super exciting. So we're going to have five stores by May. Um, and I'm learning again and I'm learning yeah. retail. I'm learning and going into stores and, and that's the 1% better every day. Like we know we're not perfect. We know we've made, we're making mistakes, but we're also creating a community in stores o- offline and also learning to get better every single okay. day within it. And, and you, you know, it's, it's consistency if you want to be the best in the world. So can I ask you a question about a difficult period in your, in, in your business career? Because I know lots of businesses talk about um, they want to create a family atmosphere and you had a family in your business originally you you, you described to us how you maxed out your mum's credit card and yeah you yeah had, uh, you had siblings working for you yeah so I mean there's been a few I mean there was some tough periods I had to make and and um, decisions I've had to make in the business that have been tough um do you know I've had to do you know I've actually had to make my mum and my brother redundant in the business um which was really tough um in 2018 and 2019 so the journey's definitely not been easy um do you know there were massive help um, you know, the decision was really tough. And if I look back on it and, you what know, what were they doing? What was, what roles did? So my mum, my mum was in accounts and played a big part in accounts and just day to day everything, um, within the business. Um, she, you know, she, she played a huge part and just, just the back end side of things. Um, and my brother was in sales. Um, my youngest brother actually is, uh, is a junior accountant. So he's, um, my youngest brother's, um, with us at the brand and he's an absolute legend doing a great job. And, you know, it was, it, was, it was a really tough time, if I'm honest, and not something that anyone wants to have to do within their career. Um, to be honest, I've never sh- – our team knows I've never shared it on a podcast before, if I'm honest. But it's, it's because it's, you know, I, 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 you know, I still have a relationship with my, you know, with my family and, my, and, you know, I'm building the relationship with my mum. And, do you know, my brother and I don't actually talk, but it, it was it, – Because I, of that moment. Yeah, because of that moment. And, and when I think about it, you know, it was, you know, there's, there's a quote from Jim Collins. It's about, you know, get the right people on the bus and if in, and get the wrong people off the bus. And, and as he says, that includes family and friends, because if you don't, if the business is going in a direction and, and, and if I'm honest, part of the tough period in my career was when I decided to change the brand to LSKD from all the feedback, my family didn't agree with me. They thought I was fucking crazy. They thought I'd gone, they'd actually thought I'd gone a bit nuts if I'm honest. And when I look back at it, I, I, you know, when I look back at it, I, 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 I was kind of because myself was so I got so much passion. I was always trying new things, and I think they thought, oh, Jason's just going off track again, and he's gonna. It's like making life jackets again, and it's gonna fail. But I'd spend so much time, oh, self-reflecting, listening to books, you know, meeting different mentors that have built brands, and and I was like, okay, cool, this is the right decision, I'm, and I'm not going to go off track again. This is the one decision we're not going to go off track yeah. again, and they all kind of thought I'd gone a bit crazy, and and I was like, no, and a lot of them didn't agree with it, you know, and 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 obviously now it's you know different. That's like, oh wow, you've done an amazing job, but that was a really difficult time in my career, and I had to stay really focused, and because I knew that. It it was the it was the right decision and it would, you know it all come out but at the time it was a it was a touching go. And were you seeing that your your mum and your brother weren't the right people for the business or did people have a, to point a bit a you? bit of both? Um, do you know a bit of both? If I'm honest, um, do you know it, you know I think family and business is really hard. Um, you know it, it's a really hard one and it's a really touchy subject for anyone that has family and business. Um, you know because I think if there's not and not that the you know if you got one leader you need one person making the decision so it doesn't get distracted within the business and when you have family in the business they can or anyone that you know that they've been there sometimes it can be a bit like well oh no 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 I want to do that I want to do that and it can confuse everybody um and and you know when you have family sometimes that that kind of happened a little bit and I wanted to really clean our brand up in terms of just create one message you know, and, and really direct the brand um, down and one Did you avenue. sort of give them the, a chance to come on that journey? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so it was, you were fair from your perspective? 
I, f- I feel like I was fair. Yeah, I feel like I was fair. I, I feel like, it, you know, and it was, and it wasn't like it was um, an overnight thing. It'd gone on for a while, uh, if I'm honest. It was, do you know, it's it's a hard thing to share because it was tough. Um, and it was, you know, it, it was, it's, it's, it's hard to say you're proud of it because you're not because it was your family. But I also think we wouldn't be in this position, if I'm honest, if we didn't. Mm. And, do you know, I still, you know, it's, 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 it's not something that I think every founder wants to go through. Um, but I've definitely had to go through that and, and, you know, I, I, you know, I support them a hundred percent, whatever they're doing. And, and, you know, my, my brother started another brand, uh, you know, he, he was just working for the brand as a, as a, as a team. It comes down to the question of, is it worth it though? Losing family relationships for the success of a business. Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, I, I, I think what we're creating is quite special. So I think it wasn't about losing a family relationship. I think it wasn't. You know, it, because it was like, I think the time was on the wall that, you know, if your family's not ready to develop themselves, if, if put into a context of, say if you're both on a journey, you whether it's you got a business partner or your family members working with you and one's listening to books and one's developing themselves. One's really trying to develop themselves to learn and they're growing. It's like an athlete, right? Yeah. And you're on a team sport, <laughs> you know, you, and, and what's interesting, if you're on a team sport and you're playing, you're not playing well, you get cut, you get down to the next grade for the next game, right? So if you're not developing yourself and the other person is developing themselves, so that is not one is, one's going to keep growing and one's, not, and one's not interested in learning or developing to understand the next stages, they're kind of going to fall behind. And if they're not interested in it, you can't, you, you can, sometimes you, you know, you can't help people that don't want to be helped sometimes. So I think, and I'm not trying to say that that, you know, that's kind of what I went through, um, you know, within the business where I wanted to start developing myself and learning and realizing a lot of these founders have, they read books, they develop themselves. And then I started realizing that, wow, we've got to do this. So I wouldn't say I ruined the relationship. I have a great relationship with all, you know, with my family, um, you know, and, and yes, my brother and I don't talk, but, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's not like it's really bad, yeah. you know. If and I'm listen, honest. thanks for sharing that because I know it's yeah. not easy. But as you don't talk to your brother, if he was to listen to this podcast, what yeah. would you what would you just like to say to him? Oh, I think I would just you know, I, you know, I hope he succeeds. You know, with what he's doing because, I, and I hope he got to learn a lot from our brand um, because you know, I, you know, and what he learned with us. You know, so I still see his kids and like, it's not, you know, it's not like bad, bad, right? Like, it's not like, it's not like the Adidas Puma story as everyone probably know. That's a, it's a bit different. You know, I'm reading that book at the moment about yeah. sneaker wars, but you know, it's definitely not that. Um, but you know, I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. I think the journey is hard in those senses, you know, that's, that's what everyone, and everyone has their story within their brand or they started or, do you know, their journey was never smooth, I think, but some just don't share it. Yeah. Um, but, for people listening to this that might be sort of interested in setting up their own business and they're thinking, well, I can rely on my brother or I can rely on my family. As somebody that's been through a brutal experience like that, what advice would you pass on to anybody that maybe is thinking of going into business with family members? Make sure you're learning together. So if if one person starts going to meetings with you know, uh, a different founder or in learning from someone that's achieved a lot or they're listening to a book or they make sure you're doing it together. Mm. I mean, we, we, you know, at, at, at the office, you know, with Ellis Keddie, we, we on board with audio books. We pay for our team's Audible account. We pay for our team if they want to go to Landmark. We, we have a personal development coach. You know, we spend about $2,500 per team member on personal development because, you know, we essentially want to be a personal development company that sells sportswear. So I think, the advice I could give is make sure you're developing yourselves together Brilliant. on the journey together. But that also goes with your team. You all should be developing yourself and then start sharing within a book club and learning because that's how you constantly grow, whether it's in your career or your personal life. And listen, if we want entrepreneurs, business people, employees, employers listening to this and learning, then it's a very good message that, you know, the struggles never stop actually regardless no. of the success of your business um we've reached the point for our quick fire questions i mean it's been a fascinating story <laughs> of you know highs and lows and really yeah. finding your purpose finding your why and i think there's a real value in people listening yeah, I hope to they this enjoy it. I hope they finding your why it. is so important so here's our quick fire questions the first one is what are the three non-negotiable behaviors that you and the people around you must buy into i mean being positive good um you know setting goals I think I think I think I think constantly developing yourself to be one percent better. Yeah, great. What's your biggest weakness and what's your greatest strength? My biggest weakness, uh, I don't have the greatest tenacity, if I'm honest. 
I've learned a bit about myself. So I surround myself with people with tenacity. I can get things done, but I have to surround myself with people that have great tenacity. Right. Uh, my greatest strength would be, I have, a, I have, you know, I think I'm lucky enough to have a lot of wonder in me and, and, and I suppose galvanizing of, you know, we're learning a lot about ourselves. So, you know, I'm always wondering what's possible in the world and how do we really create something? And then I surround myself with people that have their strengths. So we balance ourselves out as a team. That's nice. Where were you? Where are you? And where are you going? Oh, I think I was on Jason 1.0 and now I'm on Jason 2.0. If I can answer it like that. <laughs> it's a good one. And where are you going? Jason 3.0. Well, you know, yep. Constant development. The constant development to yep. grow. I mean, we're at that stage now where I'm going uh, in my career is now the brand is growing, you know, globally. So where I was, was Jason, you know, 1.0, young, you know, naive, still, you know, still naive and enjoying it, but had no idea. And now Jason 2.0 is learning, growing, understanding, trying to build and create something bigger than ourselves. Jason, I suppose if you say 3.0 is, you know, how do we build something that's global? You know, we have a team in the US now and how do we make sure we balance to create the same cultures within, but that's going to happen globally and, you know, really focus on that. And, and I mean, and, and, you know, Jason wanting, you know, want to be a great dad as well and inspire my kids. Lovely. What questions should we have asked you that we didn't? Oh, I don't know. I think you got, I think this has been the, yeah, I don't think any. I was just trying to think. You guys have asked a lot of great questions. I mean, we even spoke about my family, so we, we went deep. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any others, to be honest. Perfect. We don't have a good Should job. have I asked any? Do you think I've missed <laughs> no. any? <laughs> no. I can talk a lot, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a high-performance book club with thousands of members. Sounds like you should be part of that book club because you're an avid, an avid reader or an avid listener. You listen to books rather than read them. Um, for our high-performance book club members, well, I was going to say one, but I think because you, re you read so many. Do two three. books. No, do three. Do three. Three. three books that our book club members need to get their hands on immediately. Oh, I, I would have to say The Founder of Lululemon um, is a great book by Chip Wilson. Um, I would have to say, even three is tough, but I would have to say Tribal Leadership. So it can be a tough one, but I think it's great uh, from a cultural perspective. And I'm actually, um, if I'm honest, I'm listening to it again at the moment and this is just off the cuff because there's so many, but Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0. Uh, so it's BE 2.0 by Jim Collins. Big fan. His leadership section and, and innovation section is phenomenal. Um, yeah, so they're my three nice. today. What's one thing that people misunderstand or get wrong about you? I don't know, actually. I, I couldn't. An I don't think I can answer that. You're because, a self-aware guy, though. So yeah, I, I think so. I'm quite self-aware, and I and I like to have fun, you know, enjoy myself, and and be myself at the office. And I think, you know, uh, someone said to me the other day, "How have you done what you do when you, you know, you?" Because I do, you know, I do get so excited, and I do, you know, and sometimes I can go off track, you know, or, or say things out of context of like we were saying before, and so they're like, "Wow, does he know what we're doing?" Right. But really, I'm I'm actually focused on where we need to go, what we need to do. But I also like to enjoy it because if you're having fun, you learn more and the team is more relaxed to learn more. So really it's, you know, I like to create that environment where when we're under the heat of battle, essentially trying to get something done together, you've got to almost create that enjoyment out of it so they can come up with great ideas so then we can go and execute it together and get it done as a team. So sometimes it could come across as, is he know what he's talking about maybe? But yeah, yeah. at the same time, I, I, you know, there's, it's not a strategy. I, I just think that you've got to make sure the team is, you know, when the time when the time is to focus, but the time to have fun and make sure we're like creating that balance together to get something done together. Lovely. And the final question, your one final message for the people that have listened to this conversation about your one golden rule to living a high performance life. I think the big thing is consistency. You know, a journey is tough. I think being a part of something is really important. So consistency and being a part of something uh, whether it's, you know, because I personally love to be a part of something, which is our mission. And, and then making sure you really work on that 1% better every day. Mate, thank you so much for your time. And thank you. I really appreciate the big it. big takeaway for me from this is that I think people often think, well, I was born with a certain mindset and a certain set of abilities and a certain bunch of values and that's me. Or I've set up or work for a business that has a certain way of operating. And what you've shown us through your story is that actually nothing is fixed. You are the epitome of a growth mindset. You are the epitome Thank you. of a growth brand. And to pivot in the way that you did yeah. after 
10, 11 years of struggle and have to make big decisions like removing family members from a business and then to define those values and for that to grow your business in the way it has with community at the center and impacting people's lives at the center is hugely inspirational. So yeah, thank thanks you. for taking really the Really appreciate you for having me on. Thank no. you guys. Top man, thank you Jason. What a story, what a story. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jake here. Listen, before you go, please do me just one favor. Hit subscribe. It makes such a difference to us. The more subscribers we get, then the bigger the channel becomes. The bigger the channel becomes, the bigger the names we can attract and the more impact we can have for you. So thanks for watching and please subscribe right now.